What's up guys? We're back for another video. And in the next clip is going to be a project I've been working on in my video production college class. And basically what this project is about was my professor put um, each of us into groups of three. And within the group, we had to find someone that we knew with an interesting story. And we had to get together, the three of us, and interview the person. And basically, you know... The person that we interviewed was the kid in my group, Jason, his cousin. And his cousin's story was basically about how he had a tough life when he was growing up. He, like, dropped out of school and basically he lost his father. And then he made his own clothing company because of it. And he was trying to spread awareness and things like that and about mental health. And on the meantime, he was... um Basically, he started off working in a warehouse, and he wasn't liking it there. Although it was good pay, he still just felt it was dead and it wasn't much to do. So he went on, reached out to some people, and he became a real estate agent. And now, in the last few years, he's been doing really well. So I put together this project, and I think it came out well. You guys will hear more about He'll talk all about what I just talked about in more detail. So yeah. I hope you guys enjoy this documentary. Full name, Eugene, Gino Figueroa, uh, 23 years old, and I'm a real estate agent and uh, assistant property manager. How's it going for me so far? It, it depends, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a cutthroat industry, you know? It takes time to be able to build in this, in this field, but I've been learning a lot, and that's something that I really care about. I love learning. I'm the one who's, who's always asking questions. I always wanna know, you know why people do certain things, so uh, it'll take time. I'm not successful yet, but I know one day I, I, I end up will be. Uh, I will become successful. Was there anybody that helped me to get my help me in my uh, real estate industry? Um, so I had this one guy I swear a mentor. So I actually reached out to him via Instagram. And, you know, I was going, I was reaching out to a bunch of people on Instagram because that were in my field because they were successful themselves because I saw on their page. And I reached out to this one guy. His name was Peter Contra Forest, and he helped me a lot. You know, I learned a lot from him. I joined his team. I'm currently not with him right now. I've decided to go solo, but you know, he's at. From everything that I've learned from him within the last two and a half years being in real estate, I definitely you know thank him for everything that he's done for me so far. How did I feel when I sold my first house? It was it was a good feeling, you know. Um, it was a, a listing that I ended up getting. I had somebody from Connecticut actually call me for a referral, um, saying that one of the people that's gonna buy a house with them in Connecticut, they said, hey, uh, I need somebody to actually sell their house. And at first, she wasn't gonna let me uh, list it because I was young. And in this industry, a lot of people in this industry, the average age in real, uh, as a real estate agent is 65, and I'm 22 years old. Um, they're definitely, what, that's three times my age right there. So she called me, she said, oh, you're too young, hung up, on the, hung, up, hung up the phone. I called her back, I was like, I'm hungry, I want this listing. And she was just like, um, I don't know. She was very indecisive on it, hung up again. And then I texted her, and she called me back. She was like, all right, I'll give it to you because I see how uh, hungry you are. So I got that. Once I sold that house, it took me about a month and a half to sell, and I sold it for about three hundred fifteen thousand. So it was a pretty good, pretty good deal for me. It was up in Bloomfield. Uh, was I doing anything before real estate? Yeah, I was uh, in college. I played one year there. Um, I was at Susquehanna University, um, and then I ended up just not going back, and I decided to work at a warehouse because it was good money. I'm making more than what I was making in college. I was working at Finish Line in college. I was making like. $7 an hour, but in the warehouse I was making double that, so when I was working there, um, you know, it was kind of, like I said, it was just, it was just dead, you know, I, it was something that, it, you walk in there every morning, 7 o'clock in the morning, it was like a funeral home, everybody was just old, nobody wants to work in that environment, I, I wouldn't recommend it for anybody, no matter how much money you're getting for it, but when I was working there, that's when I ended up deciding to uh, go towards the entrepreneurial path. And, you know, I was looking for all different types of ways to be able to get away from working a nine to five. And that's when I ended up uh, starting my own clothing brand. Um, and I, after everything that I went through, after the passing of my father, I ended up deciding to make a name of clothing brand right, uh, right after him. And then his nickname was Tuto, so I named it after him. 
and the main message was to create a mental health awareness mm. uh, clothing brand to be able to get the message out there because I know there was people that were struggling just like I was and you know they weren't they didn't have the voice to be able to do so so that's why I ended up creating the brand to be able to get that word out there I made the brand about uh, mental health awareness because uh, I felt like when uh, my father passed you know I was going through a lot um, it was very stressful for me because you know he was my best friend and you know um, I went maybe a month without going to school I didn't want to eat buried my hygiene was lower than you know um, it normally was and you know I started doing research about stuff and I just started realizing that I was growing not a, a depression but I was very I was in, I was griefing and there's a lot of people out there when they lose somebody that's very important to them uh, sometimes they even commit suicide themselves to try to be with them in spirit and I felt like me getting my message out there with the clothing brand was you know a way for me to just be able to share that message to let people know that they aren't alone and you know when I ended up doing that I started just uh, reaching out to a lot of people um, that you know I didn't even have to reach out to people actually people reached out, uh, reached out to me via Instagram when I started the brand and they started sharing their stories themselves with me because of how comfortable they saw how I was so when I saw that that's, that made me want to push more to uh, get the brand out there so the way I was able to spread mental health awareness with this brand was pretty much just sharing my uh, sharing my story. So whenever somebody, uh, people's interests are hearing what other people have went through in their life. So that's what I ended up doing. I shared what I went through and a lot of people, they felt so comfortable with what I had to say. So they just felt like sharing themselves, right? So whenever you're having a conversation with somebody, the best way to be able to keep that conversation going is to, to be able to relate with them, whether that's emotionally, physically, or intellectually. And emotionally, everybody felt how I felt. Not everybody, but the people that went through what I went through. Because there was a lot of people that lost their, lo their loved ones and it took a toll on them. So how I was able to spread that was word of mouth. Once people started uh, realizing that I was sharing my message and having a clothing brand to be able to have this type of um, idea, you know, to spread the spread awareness towards everybody was all in for it, and then everything would just ended up just going, you know falling through. Everybody wanted to be a part of it. It made it a nice community, and it just so when I had the different types of hoodies, I had like a like light pink, uh, cotton, like baby blue. And I had another color, I forgot what it was. Everybody wanted those colors because of how popular they were. And it just helped market the entire brand. And um, next thing you know, I started going to malls and I started seeing people wearing my hoodie. I mean, it was, it was a basic logo, but everybody knew when they, were, when they saw Tuto, they knew it was about, it had a, a meaning towards it.